Hi guys. Hey, how's it going today? I think it's going pretty darn good. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, our uh, update today is one that we've had a lot of conversations about. So is it really cheaper to move to a state that has no state income tax? Well, it sure does sound like it should be. I know, doesn't it? So have you thought about it? I know we, we've had lots of conversation about it. So, you know, there are nine states that have no state income tax. What are they? That's Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. And we know a lot of people in California, and we've helped a lot of people in California move to all nine of those states. Yes, yes, we have. So let's talk about it. So while the states might shield your income from the IRS, it doesn't mean that people are saving more money overall because the other expenses are rising fast. So one thing, take home prices rising. So the data shows that the prices climbed on average 46.6% between May of 19 and May of 24. I mean, that's just astounding. Yeah, but, you know, that that's what it says, and this article has said that, but the home prices around here rose just as fast. So oh, they didn't, yeah. So they didn't rise faster there. Those are more, even though those are nine state numbers, they were pretty much across the board rising prices on homes. Right. So two-thirds of the states with no income tax outpaced this price growth. Over the past five years, Wyoming saw an 82% increase in list prices, the biggest increase in any state. I think it also has the lowest population of any state besides Alaska, I think Wyoming. Yeah, and it's a little warmer than Alaska, but not by much. But do they have more bu buffalo there than people? I don't know, something in Wyoming, I don't know. Three other non-income tax states saw substantial growth in home prices, including New Hampshire, 76.5%, South Dakota, 65%, and Tennessee, 52.7%. I would have thought Tennessee would have been number one or Florida. That's what I would have thought. But they're saying New Hampshire's right up there. They're at the top. And so the certain states, so Texas 26%, Washington 356 and Florida 36.4%. But the residents there are getting gouged with other expenses. In Texas and Florida and California, home insurance costs have skyrocketed as we've all been having the conversation. They're even changing the California Purchase Agreement to add um, insurance as a contingency. Yes, so. it has more than tripled. People are getting mm -hmm. canceled. Carriers are pulling out of California. That we know. Yeah, and the states that don't have income tax usually have higher sales tax and high property insurance costs because Florida has been hit with crazy weather. And it, wait till I, t I tell you what the average Florida, I get there, what they're paying for uh, homeowners insurance. Uh, states with no income may may not be as less affordable as you think. Uh, first, wealthy households are seeking to establish residency in such states to avoid paying income tax, but be correlated with higher home prices. Second, states that have no income tax would need to make up for lost revenue in other ways, which means they're going to have higher taxes in other places. Like I mean, other things like sales tax and property tax. It could be. I mean, you know. It seems like sales tax are kind of runaway on every state now. Yeah, well, I know sales tax is 10% in Wagner County, Oklahoma, which is where our lake house is. I know what it is there. It's 10%. And that's not even in a no income tax state. So yeah. it all boils down, though, prices to inventory. It's a basic economic pro uh, problem. And inventory is ultimately the problem nationwide and what's forcing the prices up. You know, lack of inventory means higher price. Uh, immigration away from high-tax states like California, Illinois, New York into no-tax states is driving up property values due to increased demand. I mean, basic economics, right? Um, the supply is relatively constrained. So that's, uh, you know, if they don't gather the income tax, they still need to pay their teachers and fix their roads. So they're going to figure it out somehow. They always do, and it always comes down to one thing, more money. Yeah. So like I said about Florida, what do you think the average price for homeowners insurance is in Florida? Mm. Want to take a guess? Do you I, want to take a guess? <laughs> I read the article, so... It's I almost $11,000 a year in homeowners insurance, which I just think is insane. That's a grand a month. Texas took fourth place with an average of $4,500, and the national average is twenty three seventy seven. I don't know where that is. But I haven't seen anything that's twenty three seventy seven lately. We heard about a condominium complex in Southern California went from one hundred eighty five thousand 
to 350,000 to 475,000 for insurance a year. Just in the last couple years. And then there's the whole deck thing that they're going to have to do, <laughs> deal with. In this particular complex, there's 46 decks and they're going to make them re-engineer these decks and get ins uh, inspections and get them all approved. And that's another 100 grand just in one HOA. So you know there's some assessments and high HOA coming there, but that's just one story. We've heard all kinds of stories about the condo complex insurance problem because the HOAs haven't kept their insurance up to the minimum standards. And now when they go to get it up to market value on replacement costs, because of course everything's gone up so much, materials and labor, um, it has created these enormous increases in HOA insurance. Yeah, so what happens is they have a master insurance policy that covers the whole complex. And then when you buy a condominium in that complex, then you have to get your own condominium insurance. So you got the master plan and then your plan, and they all piggyback on the master plan. And in our, how it affects us the most is we can't sell the property. If the master plan is not paid up or up to speed or up to a high enough um, dollar amount, the lender won't lend. So then you can't sell your house because most people, of course, need a loan and they need the loan to be a Fannie Freddie loan and you can't get a loan. So Right. And then if you pay cash only, then you've got to be willing to forgo insurance. And I don't know a lot of people that want to pay cash for a property and not have insurance on it. It just doesn't make sense. That's right. That's right. So I have some examples here of U.S. states with no income tax. I picked the four top ones where our clients have been moving. So Florida state sales tax is 6%. The effective property tax rate is 0.76. Average property tax, 4500 And average homeowner's insurance, $11,000, like we just discussed. Well, now if we were to compare that to Ventura County, we have 7 and 3 quarter percent sales tax. Mm -hmm. We have 1 and a quarter percent property tax mm -hmm. and I would think our homeowners insurance is just as much as theirs oh yeah or more or more because we've had catastrophic loss here lately and we still get to pay state income tax that's right that's right um, Nevada state sales tax 6.85 percent property tax effective rate 0.48 Average property tax twenty six sixty, and average home insurance is twelve hundred and twenty four. That's a hundred a month, not a grand a month. Right. Tennessee state <laughs> sales tax seven percent, property tax effective rate 0.44, and average property tax is seventeen hundred. Average homeowners insurance twenty four seventy, and then we got Texas state sales tax six point two five percent, property tax effective rate one point two. That's similar to here. Um, average property tax rate 4,464. Average homeowners insurance 4,456. Wow. So, so you're kind of making a compelling argument for those states. Well, yeah. Well, or <laughs> I mean, frankly, you know, people that are, think that we're in such a high tax state, I'm like, well, oh, I don't know. It's not like it, the grass is looking very much greener based on some of these numbers. Um, the Cal, like you said, California sales tax, we went through the income tax, the South California income tax goes from 1% to 12.3. So I just wrote these down real quick to give you an idea. So 68,000 to 349,000 is 9.3% because I think most people probably fall in that 70,000 to 350,000 is 9.3. And these are single file separately. I didn't do all the categories, oh, but just didn't? to give you an idea. Oh, well, you're not a CPA. Or I am not a CPA or, or accountant. So <laughs> if you, if the, and then the, the six, 700,000 basically or more, you pay 12.3%. You hit the highest bracket. So, um, I just thought we'd talk about it, what they are here yes. and what we are all paying probably in the 9.3%, um, bracket there on your income tax. So our best advice to all of our clients and to you, if you're thinking about moving out of state, definitely do your homework, talk to a CPA and make sure, because everyone's tax situation is individual and see if it's really gonna be something that is financially beneficial if that's the reason that you're moving there. <laughs> yes, because we've had people leave California, move to other states and go, oh my gosh, I'm saving no money. Right, we've had uh, one, seller that they moved to Florida and I asked them when they were leaving, they'd bought a home there and they were getting ready to move. I said, well, what's your property tax there? And they didn't know. And I thought, 
wow, I think I yeah. would have checked on that before I decided to pick up and move. <laughs> yeah, you may need a checklist there before you just uh, pick up and move. Right. It may be beneficial to you and your family's finances. So I think there's a lot of talk and a lot of myths that go around when we're all talking to, well, we talk real estate all day long, every day, but just out when you're talking to people um, out and about, there's a lot of kind of overlying kind of myths, I think, about what the taxes are here and what the taxes are there and the grass might not be so green, but definitely, definitely do your homework before you make any big moves. Yeah, and it's not difficult to do. You can go online and find out more than you ever wanted to know very quickly. Yeah, or give us a call. We're happy to talk you through it. Um, you want to make a strategy to make a move. You want to buy an investment property here, investment property somewhere else. Um, you know, we're happy. We have a huge network. We can refer you anywhere that you are thinking about moving. And we love to talk about real estate and making a plan, making a strategy. Very simply done, very simply put. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge.